more than eight years, I still continue to be impressed with the way this surgical division of the brain also divides the mind into two separate realms of conscious awareness. Neither mind right nor mind left in these conditions has any direct awareness of the existence of the other side, nor is either one aware of its own incompleteness. The mental capacities of the two hemispheres are distinctly different. The left one is the dominant, literate, talkative side of the brain, capable both of verbal reasoning and of difficult calculation. It also is the more aggressive hemisphere and is very much in charge of behavior. And this is the one that we meet in ordinary communication. Special tests are needed to make this left dominant hemisphere stand aside and allow us to uncover the minor right hemisphere. This new test is designed to confirm that although the right side of the human brain is mute and unassuming, it's considerably better at dealing with patterns and shapes. This pickup will keep a check on eye movements because it's essential that each side of the brain sees only what it's supposed to see. This wire will detect any head movement. They're going to show the housewife faces out of this selection and ask her to identify them. But in fact, they've taken the two faces in the middle and cut them together like this. Which of the two faces will she identify? When the eyes gaze in a fixed direction, each eye will divide its information between the two sides of the brain. Whatever lies off to the right is seen on the left side of the brain and vice versa. So the mute left side of the housewife's brain will see only the little boy, the right side only the girl in spectacles. Neither side will know that there's more than one face. We are going to show you a picture of a face. And after you saw it, Point to one of the faces right here on the table with your right hand. Okay, put your face up close and look steadily at the red spot. Keep your eyes steady. That's the face the right brain saw. It's the one on the left here. The question was, which side of the brain would make the choice? The right side of the brain won because it's much better at recognizing faces. It guided the eyes to its target and the right hand followed its aim. We are going to show you another face, except that now we want you to describe it to us. This is what you'll see. Only the left side of the brain can talk, and it should see only the old man. Okay. Watch the red dot. Eddie, keep steady there. Seeing an old man's face with a beard. Okay. Did you see him clearly? Mm-hmm. And was there, any, did you remember anything else about him? He had, he had a hat on. Had a hat on, that's mm -hmm. right. Nothing unusual, no. nothing strange. He had and a beard. You said a beard, do you think? It looked like he had a beard. There was a lot of hair. Right. Yeah. He actually had a bushy mustache. Maybe that's what it was. Yeah. For those of us in brain research who are beginning to think beyond behaviorism, the findings in these patients narrow down somewhat the search for that number one enigma, the nature and localization of the conscious mind. The results seem to pin down our conscious functions to those upper regions above the brain stem and the cerebellum. It looks now as if consciousness in man can be tied to the living, alert brain in action. I just can't agree with colleagues who insist that our conscious experience is only a mere passive byproduct of the work of the brain. My own view would make consciousness a real force in brain function giving our thoughts, mental images, feelings, and so on, a direct controlling influence in brain activity. If Dr. Sperry is right, the conscious mind of man is brought back into the physical world. Its powers will be fully stretched if it's ever to understand itself. But this ambitious scientific enterprise is well begun, as all the discoveries we've sampled this evening show. The aim isn't to degrade mind to matter, but to upgrade the properties of matter to account for mind and to tell how, from the dust and water of the earth, natural forces conjured a mental system capable of asking why it exists. This is David Prowett, NET, in London.
result of that series of experiments really galvanized the world into a whole new burst of research. We've learned more about the brain in the last 20 years than perhaps the previous 2000. Uh, the connecting link between the two hemispheres, known as the corpus callosum, uh, hardly appeared in the 1960 issue of the Encyclopedia Britannica because we didn't know anything about it. It is the largest bundle of nerve fibers in the human body, 200 million connections that connect the two hemispheres together, permitting interhemispheric communication. The work of Sperry established the beginnings of understanding of the specialization of the two hemispheres, and particular overhead uh, gives you the basic uh, uh, separation. It says that in the case of most right-handed people, that the left hemisphere is the center of speech and verbal activity, logical mathematical processing, linear and detailed. Linear in the sense of one sequential detailed in the sense of being interested in the precision uh, and the detail of what was being processed. It is where we tend to control our uh, physiological activity, our mental activity. It is uh, analytic as contrasted with the right brain, which is holistic. So the left brain analyzes, reduces down, it sees the trees, the right brain sees the forest. It is where we do reading, writing, and naming as contrasted with facial recognition. The right brain is very good at spatial relationships. It is the center of our music appreciation, and most musicians would tend to have a very dominant right brain. It is holistic, it is artistic, symbolic. The signs that you have posted along your streets here that show graphically the symbol that they're trying to convey. You walk at this time, or you walk on the, uh, the white lines, or there's a wheelchair, or there's a knife, a fork, and a spoon, and you instantly know what that means because your right brain is able to process that. In contrast to being sequential, which is one at a time, it is simultaneous process many, many different inputs, sensory input, visual input, auditory input, uh, all at the same time, extremely good at that. It is emotional as opposed to control.